We are living during times where sharing your knowledge has never been easier. But what are the benefits of making your work public? Why would you do that? For some, it's a form of accountability, of getting early feedback and improving the quality of their work. For others, it's a way to connect with like-minded persons, to find mentors and of course to get discovered. Personally, I think making your work public is a great way to consolidate the information further and in time create values that can help others who are just getting started or are at similar levels as you are. Whatever reason fits your own situation, the channel or platform you choose will influence your experience and results. And in this video, we will discover what are the latest options to help you along your journey. You will decide which of them fits your personality and you feel most comfortable with. So let's get started and see you after the intro. In part one of this series, we saw how to collect information and use questions to extract key points and action items. After the initial exposure, we come back later to our handwritten notes, filter out the non-essential ideas and store the references in a sustainable and future-proof format. In the second video, we reach the integration phase. Here is the place where we connect the newly discovered ideas to older knowledge, refine them and give them a new purpose. Through writing these ideas down, we improve our understanding and if we do it every day, we will get better not only at writing, but also in our thinking. In this last video of the series, I will show you how to take the results you created so far, share them with others, both for your personal development as well for helping many who go through similar challenges. When we are creating new content, we are taking an idea out of our mind and we are structuring in a form that others can understand it. Most of the time, we will discover some gaps in our knowledge. This will push us to iterate over the material, consolidating and strengthening our mind. By making our work public, we are teaching and helping others to learn. Sharing our failures and successes provides others with ideas that can influence or inspire their works and results. And on top of that, we are expanding our visibility and retaining the information for a longer time. In the words of Benjamin Franklin, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. In the 90s, Eric Mazur, a Harvard professor, made popular the peer instruction teaching method, where he completely changed the classic format of a lecture. Students receive the material that will be covered in class beforehand, and during that class, the teacher would provide a conceptual question on a specific topic. At first, students answer individually the question, and after a day share it with their peers. The group of students start discussing it, including their thought process and reasoning behind it, resulting in students teaching other students. At the end, they resubmit their answers, and the instructor reviews it and decides whether more explanation is needed before moving to the next concept. How come this way of teaching proves to be more effective? Why the classic mindset of learning only from experts can be counterproductive sometimes, and learning from persons on a similar level can help you pass a frustrating roadblock? The explanation is pretty simple. An expert faces a challenge getting through a beginner, as his vast years of experience makes it hard to remember how it was when he was just starting and all the small discoveries he made along the way. On the other hand, a fellow student or peer sharing similar knowledge level is familiar with the struggles and challenges attributed to the learning process. With these insights and the awareness of the benefits of sharing your work, let's discover what are the possible channels to get started. I separate them in three categories. First are presentations that can be at different levels, inside of the team, a local meetup, or a, even an international conference. Second are newsletters, blog, or platforms like Medium. And thirdly, podcasts, YouTube videos, or other rich media channels. So let's take a deeper look into the first category. Many years ago, inside of our team, there was an initiative to have every two weeks a small presentation using the lightning talk format. This means five to 10 minutes per talk and five minutes for questions. Since the audience was around a dozen of people, most of them developers or people with whom we interact daily, it was a comfortable environment to get started. Each of us presented a topic that we were passionate about, like technologies, tool, frameworks, but also other subjects like nutrition. 
For a long time I had difficulties getting started with the presentation until a friend recommended me the book Talk Like Ted and inside of it you will find tips how to get better holding a presentation, master the art of storytelling and create an experience that is hard to forget. Some people think that holding a presentation means being in front of hundreds and thousands of people. Even though that's a great way to increase your visibility and personal brand, you can always start at a smaller scale. In time, if you feel comfortable with this kind of channel, you can apply to bigger and bigger conferences and even attain a level where they will reach out to you. Newsletter, blogs or platforms like Medium represent the second category. For newsletter, services like Revu or Substack are a great way to get started. Very simple to set up and with the recent purchase of Revu from Twitter, all the pro features were made free for all accounts. If you're willing to invest a little bit in your domain and hosting, setting your own blog gives you even more control over how your content is presented to your audience. WordPress is usually the go-to platform for blogs, but there are newer alternatives like Wix or Medium where you can get a lot of features out of the box, however, sacrificing some control. Start sharing the most important thoughts or ideas on a weekly or bi-weekly basis and don't worry that at the beginning you don't have a huge amount of followers. Take advantage of this initial anonymity to get used to the process, create the discipline to consistently make content and refine your writing style. In time, your audience will grow and with it also your skills. The third and last category is composed of rich media channels like podcasts or YouTube videos. Compared with other categories, these channels require an initial investment, at least in a better microphone. In return, you are creating a stronger connection with your audience as people listen to podcasts while shopping, working out, or even while driving. Nowadays, tools like Anchor make podcasting easy as you can get one running in a matter of minutes. Once you have your recording, you can even upload it from your mobile phone to their servers and they take care of making it available on multiple platforms like Spotify, Apple or Google Podcast, and even Overcast. If you can invest a little bit more and you want to take your content at a higher level, an excellent medium is video, as it allows you to share graphics, screen recording, sketches and much more. And one of the best platforms for sharing this kind of content is YouTube, with over 2 billion users accessing it each month. Compared with other channels I presented so far, this format will require the largest upfront investment, mostly for the sound, lining and the camera setup. However, nowadays you don't need to start by purchasing an expensive DSLR camera, as there are much cheaper alternatives. For example, the camera on your mobile phone, a well natural lighted environment and a dedicated external microphone can be good enough at the beginning. The advantage of this medium is that it offers a closer personal connection with your audience, building trust and offering one of the richest experience. Over this mini-series, we saw how note-taking can go beyond collecting ideas and consuming information. Deconstructing and reassembling them afterwards, refining and linking ideas together can produce breakthroughs in your work, independent if you're a student or already a professional with many years of experience. I hope you discover some ideas on how to customize your own process and that you will take the first step in creating and sharing content that can help not only you but also others to learn and grow. If you enjoyed these videos, don't forget to subscribe and I hope you have a great time and remember, make your goals happen.